Thank you, um, Aïssa Kilabo. You're the Deputy Executive Director of uh, UN Habitat. So thank you for joining us today in the SDG studio. My name is uh, Marine Godron. I work for Platforma, that is a European network of uh, local and regional governments involved in city-to-city uh, -city cooperation for development. Um, and uh, I will ask you today some, some questions on the SDGs and the, the UN uh, Urban Agenda. So my first question, you, uh, you are now working at the UN Habitat, but you were before that uh, mayor of Kigali in Rwanda. So you're very well placed to know the, the specificities and the challenges that local governments face. So what do you think SDG means for local governments? Well, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers of the European Development Days for giving us the opportunity um, and also thank colleagues here for having set something like this, the, the SDG platform, which is really, really much appreciated and needed. Uh, regarding the question that you have asked me, I think mayors today have a huge opportunity in the sustainable development agenda. And I want um, us as leaders to look at it from that perspective so that we can be able to support the mayors to take their rightful position in leading their cities from an informed view perspective with support, with the relevant research, with uh, technical capacity, with the right resources, but also the right networking capacity. Uh, the sustainable development agenda is a very integrated agenda and cities are very integrated. And the closer you are to them, the more you see the integratedness. So while in the MDGs, we had issues that were specific, but they were not as integrated. So it was hard to connect specific siloed issues to an integrated agenda, especially at city level. The fact that the SDGs are integrated and the fact that they also recognize the specific role of cities and human settlements as a key component in achieving sustainable development really gives a, a very good platform for mayors to engage. So we believe within the UN as a family, and I was lucky that I also at the time that I was mayor, the UN was delivering as one in Rwanda. And that was one of the biggest opportunities that we had because I was able to engage with the UN to look at issues. At that time, it was really women in uh, poverty and how I could inclusively support them to be part of the transformation of the city. And it was easy for me to do so because of that delivering as one uh, model which brought on board all the UN agencies and we all focused on one issue rather than talking, about, or talking to them and engaging them uh, differently. Now today, what was piloted at that time has been developed into a system and the UN system has already taken on these procedures and policies and is undertaking a review process so that we can be integrated. So it is important that I think the mayors really take advantage of this and own it and then move on with it. Secondly, a UN habitat together with the UN, especially as we're moving towards um, Quito, as the outcome of the new urban agenda, we made it very clear that we need to have sound national urban policies that are integrated, but also a capacity at local government level to plan at scale and to do so strategically, but together with that, enable local government with the right technical capacity and right resources. And that, for me, is a really good backbone for uh, them, again, to be able to use that to assess themselves. This, the other thing that we have been able to do within that uh, particular area, a UN habitat has been defined as the focal point. We are focal point within the UN to support the UN system to monitor the uh, implementation of SDGs with a specific focus on goal number 11. It's a lot easier for a mayor to meet with a colleague mayor, say from the South Africa, in Africa, with Europe, talking about common principles. And I think I'm so happy and delighted to note that uh, the, the global compact of mayors that we started, which was really focused on climate action, has now been combined with a covenant of mayors in Europe. And so we have the global covenant of mayors, and that's a platform for knowledge sharing, and really uh, we believe that it's going to help mayors to connect and be able to move um, very fast. So it's a huge opportunity, and I believe that uh, we should really give it the best that it deserves. 
Okay. As the, um, the constituency of uh, local and regional governments really advocates for the, um, having an urban SDG. So now that we have it, it's the SDG 11 for um, also um, affordable housing and, and, uh, and improve uh, uh, public services, improve condition, uh, living conditions uh, in slums. How does that fit with the, the newly adopted uh, urban agenda? How, how does the SDG 11 uh, fit in the, or maybe the, the reverse, how does the urban agenda that was adopted in uh, October 2016 fit within the SDG framework and how does that complement the SDG 11? Yeah, I think that's a very useful question that actually the, we've been asked a number of times. We should look at the new urban agenda as a tool, a very strategic tool to enable us to implement the SDGs especially goal number 11. The world convened to decide on what strategic priorities and issues should be addressed, and that is the SDGs. The next question was the how. And I want to say that the how is very important for urbanization because urbanization is a tool that we all have as leaders. We can plan and we can decide what our cities should be like and lead and manage them in that way. So the new urban agenda comes out clearly articulating the key components that are important to be focused upon and invested in if we are going to achieve sustainable development and sustainable urbanization as defined in goal number 11. There are four areas that were really quite well articulated. We want to ensure safety, we want to ensure inclusiveness, we want to ensure inclusion, we want to ensure sustainability and resilience of our cities and human settlements. How do you achieve that? You need to have sound urban policies uh, integrated. And I'm happy again to note that last month I was here with the OECD and we are trying to uh, create platforms that will be um, enabling governments, uh, especially in developing countries, to share experience with the OECD member states and see how integrated their national policies, uh, uh, urban policies are concerned. Then secondly, we have got the three components that constitute the new urban agenda in addition to the, the national urban policy. At local level, do you have the right policies? Do you have the right governance? Do you have the right legislation, especially on land? Second, have you planned? Do you have a good plan and design for your urbanization, especially long term? And third, do you have the right financial and business model to make that bankable and to make it uh, able to create jobs and also to be able to support the investment in infrastructure and housing? So all these are very well articulated. And then in addition to that, we were able, following Quito, to look at how beyond the issues, how are we going to cooperate? So we have also an implementation facility that explains how um, the public or government will engage with the private sector, will engage with civil society, will engage uh, with, with, with academia and the rest of the other stakeholders in, an, in, a, in, in a manner that each one of them will clearly know what to do and they can be able to monitor. So this is a very powerful tool that again we are insisting and we are really working out that it be done at national level but importantly also at sub-national level. Thank yeah, you. So, um, Unfortunately, we will have to, to conclude soon, so um, I would have to, to ask you as a, as a conclusion to explain us how can, um, can local governments and cities um, understand and get uh, ownership of these agendas that can seem very far away from them and how they can raise their citizens' awareness on, on these global challenges, uh, maybe through their international action or public policies. Okay, that's, that's a very good question. I think there are three quick points here. The first one is that this is a global compact and it has very clear indicators and targets that are articulated in the SDGs and also specifically for cities for goal number 11. And we have got a similar framework uh, of measuring the achievement of the new urban agenda, again with indicators and, and specific targets. So there is a framework that now uh, uh, translates the vision into actionable points. So that's one area. And we are planning that in the process of monitoring, we are actually going to be engaging the cities 
and national governments to know which areas and how the assessment is being done so that they can learn from one another and also be able to assess themselves along the way. That's one. Uh, secondly, the awareness creation is important because it's initially so intricate, but we are trying as much as possible to simplify it and also create a campaign of citizens, everybody knowing, know your city, what is urbanization about, how, what is my stake in it. So we have got an advocacy platform and that advocacy platform will continue to enhance knowledge about urbanization, but also importantly, networking and partnerships. We have an upcoming World Urban Forum next year in Kuala Lumpur, but that takes place every two years. And together with that, we have what we call World Urban, um, uh, World Urban Campaigns that are done also at national level. So advocacy is very, very important. And of course, the youth in women play a very big stake in communicating this to the rest of the world. The very final one is once you have understood it, how are you going to access resources? How are you going to attract talent? How are you going to bring in the necessary skills that you need? Again, within the, the framework of partnerships that I mentioned, we are focusing on the key strategic uh, uh, programs and policies and working with the World Bank on an implementation facility so that when the right policies are in place, that can be seen as a point of credit worthiness so that uh, uh, cities can be able to access financing together with government and invest in the right areas to achieve sustainable urbanization. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Aisa Kirabo. Thank you very much and thanks to Platformer.